Guys, welcome back to another episode by Backyard Steve. I want to show you something today and I want to show you something how it's not done right. There is a right way and a wrong way to do everything, including and not limited to filling holes on the back of a car. There obviously used to be a spoiler here at some point in its life, but it's not here anymore. We don't have to stress about this. We can fix this, but there is a right way and a wrong way. And I'm going to tell you right now, every way that doesn't involve a welder is the wrong way. And we're going to do it the wrong way because this is backyard steep. But if we're being completely transparent, I actually can't weld. I have what's called an ICD. It's an implanted cardiac device that's wired to my heart. As crazy as that sounds, it's Iron Man stuff. But with that said, I cannot weld because the electrical current or something, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. Whatever the welder does will mess with my ICD and will shock me. It's essentially a defibrillator. Not essentially, it is a defibrillator. Will shock me and it is much, much stronger. How does it go? It, we're getting off topic here, but just real quick. A police taser is something like two joules of electricity. This is 27 joules of electricity. This will knock you on your ass. So we're not welding today. We're not getting into that. Today we're going to fill this with body panel adhesive. It is not the ideal way, but it does work. And I have done it before. I actually shaved some door handles on a blazer with it and it lasted years and years and years. So we're gonna get into this. We're gonna see what happened here and why this does this. I'm by no means a professional body man, but I do have a lot of experience in this. And generally what happens is from the metal going through heat and cold cycles, expands and contracts, expands and contracts at a different rate than whatever is in here. And that is how you end up with something like this. And then once this starts, it does not stop. Moisture gets in there. It freezes, it rusts, and it creates all kinds of problems. So the first step to dealing with this is we need to grind it out. But let's see what's on the inside of the trunk first. And on the inside we have, oh, right there. It looks like some fiberglass they used. You know, they were on the right track. This is probably several years old and it works, but it is just not the ideal way comparing to doing it the properly, proper way, which is welding it. But that's all right, they're on the right track. We, uh, it's actually still on there pretty, Pretty good, I might leave that there. We'll see, we're gonna start by dealing with that. this off just to kind of protect it as I was sanding and I, good thing I did, I had some tape on my hand or paint on my hand. Anyway, you can see I drilled them out to where that fiberglass starts. I did try and scrape it off with a screwdriver there. It is pretty solid. So I'm just going to reuse this. I'm reusing it again because the only right way to do this is if you're to weld up the holes. Anything else is half ass. So this is Backyard Steve. We're doing things half ass, I guess, today. I don't know. I like to do things properly, but I can't weld. I don't even own a welder. I used to own a welder. I don't anymore. So we're going to use some body panel adhesive. This is what we're using today. It's good for about 600 PSI. Works good. There's different series of it. You see the 15? That's the, uh, that's the open tube time and the tube will start to seal up on you. I used the one minute before. It's a little too quick, as your old lady would say to use this we're going to fill these holes and one thing i should mention grind these down flat and the reason being because if you have a low spot you can always fill it in if you have a high spot sometimes you can't sand it down and get it level it's easier to work with a low spot and fill it in you can always add more so that said we're going to add a little bit of this probably between all the holes a teaspoon if that probably not even that much we're going to let it cure for about 90 minutes and then we're going to sand it down things are feeling pretty cured. Um, I'm gonna give this a quick shot with uh, 120 grit and then just put a little bit of body filler on there. We don't need much, just a little bit. 
Keep in mind the body filler has zero structural integrity, at least this has some. So we wanna just put a little bit on there and then we're gonna sand it again in 120. Now when you put on the body filler, or some people call it Bondo, Bondo is just like a brand. It's like saying Chevron for gas. It's, it's gas. Chevron, Bondo is a brand, it's body filler. When you put it on, I always put it on a little too much. I make it a high spot because I end up sanding it down anyway and then it makes it nice and level. That's what we want, is level. We don't want a low spot, we don't want a high spot, we want it level with the body. Line. So I'll put on a little too much and then come back and sand down. Hey guys, so what you missed there was I had the body filler on there, it cured, I sanded it in a 240. We're gonna hit it with some high build primer here. Uh, a couple things to note. Number one, don't mask off exactly where your primer is gonna be. And leave yourself a big reg. I, I see it all the time, don't do that. You want it nice and flat so that we can feather it out after and then you won't see it, it's number one. Number two, give yourself some working space. Don't just sand this area right here. You wanna sand around it too because the primer is gonna need to lay out. Um, I didn't put, cover this trunk obviously because we're going to have to sand the whole trunk anyway. I only put it where we're not working on the quarter panel here. I'm also using a HLVP uh, with a uh, high belt primer. It's mixed at two to one and then I've got a little bit of reducer in it to help it spray a little better. I'm going to spray it around 30 PSI, 32 PSI, just kind of on the high end. Now if you don't have one of these and don't have access to an air compressor, you can always run just Oh, sorry, you can always use just a rattle can high build primer. This is just much cheaper if you're doing a lot of it and it builds a lot better. So let's go. Oh, one more thing. Always wear a ventilator. I don't know where mine is, but I'll be wearing it. Okay guys, check it out. So we have the primer dried. I did turn the car around here just so I had a little better light and it wasn't like up against the door. Primer is dry now, we're cured. We're gonna sand this in a 600 grit. So now what you're gonna see is we're going to go around the actual primer in a 600 grit. And then I'm gonna go out here in an 800 grit. And what that's gonna allow to do is what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the paint to the actual primer area here, like the color. And then out here, we're gonna blend in the clear. So there'll be lots of color, little bit of color, almost no color, clear. Let's get it. You know, by the time we clear all the way out here on both sides, we might as well just clear the whole trunk. So we're gonna clear pretty much the whole trunk. We're not gonna do this side, but we're gonna do the whole top side of the trunk. Now, if you wanted to do this properly, the actual way to do it would be you take this color that you're putting here, you apply the color all the way across here, and you apply the color all the way down here. And you thin it out down here. It's called blending. You thin it out up here and blending. We'll make a video on that another day, just not today. Today, it's backyard time. Okay guys, let's review what we got here. So we have the primer on there. I sanded it in a 600 grit. We got it nice and smooth. Uh, I then covered everything that I don't want overspray on and plastic. Now, is this the right way to paint a car? 
technically. Technically it's not. If you were to do it the proper way, you'd be removing the molding all the way around the rear glass. If you really wanted to get carried away, you'd be taking the glass right out. But economy or economically, um, masking it off will work. You don't want to make sure you overmask. Now overmasking would be, I should have done a demo. Overmasking would be if your masking tape gets onto your paint that you're not painting, your existing paint, and then you spray it, you're gonna end up with a really dirty line there. Undermasking would be if you don't have enough masking and it, like you get white paint like you're spraying now onto your molding, that's okay, you can clean that off. It's, if you overmask, you're gonna have a problem. So anyway, this is looking good. So what I've done here is we have a primer on both sides. I blocked it at 600 and then I used the scotch spray and went over it really quick. So essentially what you're doing is you want to get rid of all the shine. You can see there's no shine in this, but there's still paint under it. So when we clear it, it'll all blend together. Because as mentioned before, there's no point in clearing, you know, three quarters of the hood. So we'll just do the whole hood. Uh, we've got a little plastic on there now. I uh, get ready to roll. So what I did was I, I masked here. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it yet, but the plan is we're gonna paint these two and then we're gonna come back, we're gonna clear it all. And we're gonna clear up to somewhere around this line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a blend spray and I'm just gonna go across it. And what that's gonna do is melt the two clear coats together. I'm just not sure how I feel about this because it could leave a line there, but I could polish it out if it does. Um, I was gonna mask it lower, but then we get to the line down. This is too much, so I went with that. Um, Otherwise, yeah, we're getting close to party time. So next you're gonna see me, I'm gonna use a wax and greaser degreaser on here. I'm gonna get rid of that, you know, contaminants and solvents from the last 30 years of this car um, to make sure we get a good bind and chemical, chemical bind, I don't know. And then uh, I'm gonna use what's called a tack cloth. It's a really sticky cloth. You don't have to use it. You can use like, you know what works really good as a blue shop towel. We just wanna make sure we have no dust on here. So we're going to use a tack cloth on there. You know what? Because not all of you have access to a tack cloth, I'm going to use the blue shop towel. Keep it more realistic. So we're going to use blue shop towel on there. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to hit it. We'll put the paint on there. I don't know how well it shows up in the video where the white is. It almost blends in. I wish I had gray primer so you could see it more, but we're going to we'll put a good coat of white over the primer. And then from there, we're going to kind of feather it out a little bit on both sides to kind of blend it and then we'll clear it. And hopefully if we miss the paint right, everything's gonna look good. Hey guys, so you wanna take your, what's called final wipe. You can use the greaser, brake clean works. The risk you run into with brake clean is it does leave a residue. And uh, give it a good solid wipe. Make sure, hold on. Now make sure when you guys scuff this, again, no shine anywhere. If you start wiping it off with final wipe and you see some shine, you need to scuff that. Also, if you saw I opened the trunk and I got all around the edges because that clear is going to run over, right? You don't want it peeling in two weeks because you didn't clear right. So you want to put your final light on, on there or your degrees or brake clean, whatever you're using. Just kind of give it some nice, smooth, consistent wipes. You do want to wear a mask or ventilator. The only reason I'm not is so that my GoPro mic can actually pick up the audio. Otherwise, it definitely will be. And I definitely will be when I'm painting. Yeah, just like that's what we're looking for. Get some nice good wipes. Just like that. Now we're gonna go grab a clean cloth. We got a brand new one here, and I'm gonna wipe it. We want to see absolutely nothing on this one. Some good wipes. Paint. I'll be wearing a mask, so I'm going to time lapse this. But yeah, you'll see I'm going to paint it. I'm going to wait a little bit and I'm going to clear coat it. Hey guys, while we're painting here, a couple things to point out. I did mix this two to one uh, with some reducer. Also, another thing to mention is you can do this with a rattle can, it's just harder. But if you were to go get your paint mixed, you'd want to get a base clear separate so that you can blend it nice. You can also use a um, 
what they call perfect match, but it's not a perfect match. Like the paint on this car is oxidized for 30 years. So as you can see, I'm just spraying it and I'm blending it out and spreading the color around from thick to thinner and thinner and thinner. And then finally we will clear it. If I wasn't making a video on blending right now, I would actually just be painting the whole trunk lid the same color. But because we're making a video on blending, that's why I'm doing it this way. Well guys, overall, I think that went pretty well. You can't see at all where we actually painted and where we blended. There is a little bit of dust in it, but I mean, we're working in a garage, a dirty garage. My garage door is frozen closed. I can't get all my garage or my garbage out to my dumpster. So like it's just piling up until my door is thawed out enough. Anyway, Canadian problems. Uh, overall, though, it looks really good. The color is, I would say, pretty darn close. I think with a polish on this side, you won't even see that we painted the trunk. Even if you're looking for it, I don't think you'd see. So we're gonna need to polish this though because that clear is much nicer than that clear. Uh, down here in the transition, looks pretty darn good to me. I don't see anything that jumps out at all. It is, I mean, not ideal lighting in here compared to outside, but overall it looks good. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Hope you guys are happy with that. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Please, please consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next one.